Hi, this is a first lecture from my basic game design course. In this course, I'll tell you about the elements that create game design and what you should consider before developing your game. We'll discuss metrics and analytics, monetization level and narrative design, and we'll study how to write good documentation. My name is Sergei Snigirov. I'm a senior game designer and author of the podcast 80 Levels of Game Design. And today, during the first lecture, I tell you about genres and their mechanics. It's a simple but necessary knowledge to start. The world of video games is as diverse as it complex, with myriad genres that offer players unique experiences. Understanding these genres is not just about categorizing games, it's about appreciating the different types of interactions, activities, tests and goals they offer. To start understanding game design in games, we must realize the genres. The concept of game genres dates back to the early 18th with Chris Crawford's book The Art of Computer Game Design. This book categorizes games based on uh, their main activity and player experience. Initially fun, classifying games into genres became a crucial marketing tool as the gaming industry expanded. Uh, in the 90s, popular genres such as shooting, racing and platformer games dominated the gaming landscape. However, as the industry evolved, the challenge of assigning a single genre to games became apparent. Often modern games mix ideas from various genres, which defies simple categorization. However, I choose the most popular genres and try to describe them with simple language. Today we'll discuss RPG, action games and its many subgenres, adventure, action adventure, fighting, puzzle, racing, casual games, strategy, simulators, card and board games, etc. Let's start with my favorite, and quite actual now, thanks to Baldur's Gate, the RPG genre. RPGs are celebrated for their depth and flexibility. They allow players to immerse themselves in another world make meaningful choices and experience the consequences of these choices. RPG's narrative and character development are often comparable to this in literature and film, making them a favorite among players who enjoy story-driven content. RPGs are centered around playing a role within a game world. Players often control a character or a party of characters, each with skills, attributes and backstory. The progression in these games is marked by the accumulation of experience points, which are used to enhance the character's abilities and skills. The RPG genre is vast, with several subgenres with different play styles, but we can talk about the most popular. First, it's a tactical turn-based RPG, like Baldur's Gate, Divinity Original Sin, Pathfinder and Pillars of Eternity. In these games you can stop and think whenever you want. Uh, they are based on tactic fights, interactive objects and uh, several ways to solve a situation. In detail you can know about that in my article Digging into the Game Design of Baldur's Gate 3 or in my podcast 80 Levels of Game Design. Link in the description. Second is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game or MMORPG. These games take the RPG experience to an online platform, allowing players to interact with the community inside the game world. World of Warcraft is a very bright example of this subgenre, offering a blend of questing, exploration and social interaction in a vast online universe. Also, if online, Elder Scrolls Online and almost every game with the world online in the title. Last but not least in this list is the action RPGs. These games blend the mechanics of RPGs with action-oriented gameplay. It's some kind of mix between the action and RPG genres. They often feature real-time combat and require quick decision-making and reflexes. It's very well-known games like The Witcher or Skyrim. By the way, let's talk about action games. This genre is categorized by their demand for quick reflexes and timely interaction. It's an incredibly huge genre that includes various subgenres, but it's always testing the player's reaction and reflexes. The essence of action games lies in their fast-paced nature and the requirement for immediate responses to in-game challenges. These games often test the player's reflexes, precision and hand-eye coordination, making them both challenging and engaging. Many action games involve combat, whether it's hand-to-hand -hand or with weapons, 
Physical challenges like jumping, running and navigating obstacles are also common. Unlike turn-based games, action games typically occur in real-time, adding to the intensity of the gameplay. The transition to 3D gaming in the 90s, with titles like Tomb Raider and Resident Evil, brought new dimensions to action games, offering more immersive and complex environments and making these games incredibly popular. Subgenres of these games are shooter, fighting games and even platformers. But in my opinion, platformers are much closer to adventure. And here we go to adventure. Contrasting with action games, adventure games focus on the character's journey, often involving a plot and peaceful interaction with the environment and characters. These games typically offer a narrative driving experience, allowing players to immerse themselves in a story or an open world adventure. The main characteristic of adventure games is puzzle solving. This can range from simple inventory based puzzles to complex problems that require critical thinking and observation. This genre is often story driven. The narrative is a central element. These games often feature complex stories with well developed characters and immersive worlds. In adventure games, life cannot exist without exploration. Players are often encouraged to explore the game environment. This exploration can reveal more of the game's story, puzzles or sometimes hidden additional content. Dialogue and interaction with other characters are key components. These interactions often drive the story forward and can involve making choices influence the game's outcome. Unlike action games, adventure games typically have little to no combat. The focus is more on narrative and puzzle solving. Examples of adventure games include Portal, Untitled Goose Game and Grim Fandango. In a mix of action and adventure, we have an action-adventure genre that blends elements of both action and adventure genres. Action-adventure games are like interactive blockbuster films. They combine fast-paced gameplay with narrative twists and turns offering a mix of combat, exploration and story. Series like Uncharted exemplify this subgenre, providing action-packed sequences and a compelling storyline. These games blend the exploration and puzzle solving of adventure games with the combat and reflex-based challenges of action games. While maintaining a strong narrative, adventure action games also include significant action sequences often with real-time combat. Players might solve puzzles one moment, explore new areas the next, and then engage in combat or other action-based challenges. Games like The Legend of Zelda and Uncharted are quintessential examples of adventure action games offering a mix of exploration, puzzle solving and combat. It's a good way to come to puzzle games. Puzzle games test players' logic, pattern recognition and problem-solving skills. Often utilizing abstract graphics, these games focus purely on the puzzle elements, devoid of narrative or additional entertainment layers. One of the most significant games of all time is Tetris, a classic puzzle whose gameplay revolves around organizing falling blocks efficiently. Puzzle games are a genre of video games that emphasize problem solving. They challenge the player's logical thinking, pattern recognition, strategy and sometimes their problem-solving speed. Puzzle games have a long history and have evolved significantly over the years. The core of puzzle games is solving problems of puzzles. This can range from simple, shape-fitting challenges to complex, logical or mathematical problems. Puzzles in these games can include word puzzles, number puzzles, logic puzzles, special puzzles and more. While some puzzle games have a narrative, many focus primarily on gameplay. The story, if present, is often minimal and enhances the puzzle-solving experiences. Brain training element. Many puzzle games are designed to train or test cognitive skills like memory, spatial rotation and logical thinking. Accessibility and casual play. Puzzle games are often easy to learn but hard to master, making them accessible to many players. 
they are popular in casual gaming and mobile gaming platforms. With the advent of smartphones, puzzle games saw a resurgence, with games like Candy Crush Saga becoming cultural phenomena. But we'll talk about a little bit later. Modern puzzle games often combine innovative mechanics with artistic design, as seen in games like Monument Valley and uh, Witness. Puzzle games are a calmer experience, but racing games are the opposite. Racing games divided into simulators and arcades test speed and competition. Simulators aim for realism, allowing detailed customization of vehicles, while arcade racers focus on the fun and excitement of driving without the complexities of real-world physics. As technology advanced, racing games became more sophisticated, offering 3D environments, realistic physics and detailed vehicle models, as seen in games like Gran Turismo and Forza Motorsport. A nice example of arcade racing is the Need for Speed. Characteristics of racing games are speed and competition, whether against AI opponents, time or other players. Racing games often feature a variety of vehicles, cars, motorcycles, boats, etc., and tracks ranging from realistic recreations of real-world locations to fantastical environments. We already talked about turn-based RPGs, but I'm not mentioning a brother of this intelligent sum genre. Of course, it's a strategy game. Strategy games are the art of planning and tactics. These games require players to plan and manage resources, often involving conflicts against other players or AI. These games are typically viewed from top-down perspective, allowing players to oversee and control their units or resources. This genre is diverse, with many subgenres and styles, each offering a unique strategic experience. We have a real-time strategy, RTS. In RTS games like StarCraft or Age of Empires, players must make decisions and take action in real time. These games often involve building bases, uh, gathering resources and commanding armies in battles. Turn-based strategy, TBS, such as Civilization and XCOM, allow players to take turns making decisions. This format gives players more time to think about strategies. For X games standing for Explore, Expand, Exploit and Exterminate. For ex games like Stellaris involve managing empires on a large scale, often in a space or historical setting. Tower Defense. In these games, players must defend against waves of enemies by building and upgrading defensive structures or towers, as seen in games like Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, these days, Tower Defense has a huge popularity among mobile players. Characteristic of strategy games, planning and decision making, uh, players must think ahead and consider the consequences of their actions. Resource management. Many strategy games involve managing resources such as money, materials or manpower. Efficient resource management is often key to success. Tactical and strategic depth. Uh, these games typically offer both tactical and strategic layers, requiring players to make decisions on both the micro, individual units or tasks, and macro, overall strategy levels. Competitive and cooperative play. Strategy games can be played against AI opponents or other players, offering both competitive and cooperative experiences. While strategy games are so hard, simulators could offer a zero-brain experience Simulator games aim to replicate real-life activities, offering players an authentic experience of various professions and uh, lifestyles. These games focus on realism and often do not have traditional gaming rewards uh, and objectives. Uh, but here you have one purpose to do. We already talk about racing simulators and yes, it's a part of this genre. Uh, the primary goal of simulator games is to mimic reality, but make it more fun. This involves accurate representations of the physical and operational characteristics of the subject, whether it's um, a vehicle, a city or a profession. 
We have so many simulators these days, uh, vehicle simulators. These games simulate the operation of vehicles like cars, planes, and trains. Examples include a Microsoft Flight Simulator for aircraft and Eurotrack Simulator for trucks. Uh, life simulators, games like The Sims allow players to control virtual people managing their daily lives, relationships, and careers. City and business simulators, these games focus on building and managing cities or businesses. SimCity and Roller Coaster Tycoon are classic examples where players design, build, and manage complex systems. Farming simulators, games like Farming Simulator let players experience the life of a farmer managing all aspects of running a farm from planting to selling. And of course, survival simulators. These games like The Long Dark uh, simulate survival in challenging environments, focusing on resource management and environmental hazards. Let's move on. Shooter games. Shooter games are a part of action games, but it's so popular that we can talk about it separately. Shooters involve using long-range weapons to defeat opponents. They are categorized into first-person shooters, FPS like Call of Duty or Doom, and third-person shooters, TPS like Gears of War, each offering a different perspective. Shooter games a prominent genre in the video game industry, primarily focused on combat involving firearms or other projectile-based weaponry. Their emphasis on fast-paced action characterizes them and requires players to have quick reflexes and precision. It has a combat-centric gameplay. The core of shooter games is combat, where players use firearms or other ranged weapons to engage enemies. In a subgenre's part, Besides FPS and TPS, we have uh, tactical shooters focusing on realism and strategy. Tactical shooters like Rainbow Six Siege require players to plan, coordinate with teammates, and use tactical maneuvers. Arena shooters, fast paced and often set in closed multi level arenas, these games like Quake emphasize quick reflexes and mastery of the game's weapons and maps. Hero shooters. Combining elements of shooters and MOBAs, hero shooters like Overwatch feature heroes with unique abilities and roles. Battle Royale. These shooters focus on online competition where players control unique heroes with specific abilities. Battle Royale games like Fortnite involve many players fighting in a shrinking territory until one remains. Rifle is not the only way to fight with your opponent, and fighting games know it very well. Fighting games involve hand-to-hand -hand combat of the use of melee weapons. Uh, they require quick actions and knowledge of combinations to inflict maximum damage. These games are often played against other people, but also feature single-player modes. Iconic titles for that are Mortal Kombat and Tekken. Fighting games are a genre of video games centered around close combat between a limited number of characters in a stage where the boundaries are fixed. These games are typically characterized by their simplicity of play and depth of strategy, making them popular in both casual and competitive gaming. Characteristics of fighting games are one-on-one -on -one combat, the core of fighting games is the one-on-one -on -one battles between characters, each with unique moves and abilities. Combo system. These games often feature a combo system, allowing players to perform nice attacks. Special moves and techniques. Characters usually have special moves that are more powerful or have unique properties compared to regular attacks. Health bars and timers. Matches are typically governed by health bars and timers, with victory achieved by depleting the opponent's health bar or having more health when time runs out. Some prefer to fight, but some use their intelligence. Card and board games in video gaming refer to digital version of traditional tabletop games. This genre includes classic card and board game adaptations and new digital creations. Digital platforms have given traditional card and board games a new life, allowing for innovative gameplay mechanics. This genre includes classic games like poker and modern digital games that use cards as a central element. 
popular examples of these types of games are Hearthstone, Marvel Snap, Ogwind. These games need strategy and luck, often combine elements of strategy and luck with players needing to make strategic decisions based on random elements like dice rolls or card draws. And multiplayer focus. Many card and board games are designed for multiple players, offering competitive or cooperative gameplay. Board games are an ancient genre created before the digital era. One of the oldest digital genres, however, is the platformer. Platformers involve navigating through levels by jumping on platforms, avoiding obstacles, and sometimes engaging in combat. They test the player timing and dexterity. From classic games like Super Mario to artistic titles like Limbo, platformers have offered various experiences. These games often combine action elements with puzzle solving and exploration. It's a genre of video games and a subgenre of action adventure games. And of course, these games often feature a wide range of environments, each with unique challenges. Famous examples of platformers are Super Mario, Sonic, and Celeste. A modern game transforming sometimes narrowly focused mechanics to mass culture by simplifying it and transform brutal mechanics into the easiest. For more information, see my article, The Toll of Monetization on Creativity, link in the description. That's why I want to end this lecture with the casual and hyper-casual game genres. Casual games are video games designed to be easily accessible and enjoyable by a wide range of players. They are often characterized by simple rules, short sessions, and the ability to pick up and play quickly. These games are easy to understand and get into, making them accessible to a broad audience. Designed for short bursts of play, perfect for filling brief periods of free time, they often have a broad appeal and do not require significant time investment of gaming skills. Famous examples of these games are Candy Crush Saga and Angry Birds. But modern hyper-casual games is simpler. It's uh, quick and incredibly easy. They are typically played for a short period of time and often have an audience that doesn't think that they are gamers. These games involve a few objects and simple tasks, testing endurance and focus. It's about minimalistic design, faceless models and many ads. Games like Crossy Road or Helix Jump are iconic in this genre. Each of these genres contributes to the rich tapestry of the gaming world, offering diverse experiences to suit different player preferences. From the competitive intensity of fighting games to the strategic depths of card and board games and the accessible fun of casual games, there's something in the gaming universe for everyone. And yeah, we didn't talk about roguelikes, rhythm music games, visual novels or arcades. Nowadays we have so many genres and subgenres that I doubt someone could easily name all of them, but today we looked at the most popular, and it's a great way to start this game design course. The following lecture will be about game design and the elements that make it up, and what you need to consider before you develop your game. Thank you for watching.